the main place that we hold tension that affects our voices, though, comes from here. Yeah, so from working all day, sitting at the computer, and feeling the stress of emails <laughs> causing these to come up here. You can feel it too, right? Do this and then don't talk. But feel this. Yeah, so overdo it so you can feel it. But you can feel how if my shoulders are coming up around my ears, I'm putting the tension really here as well, which is going to cause vocal damage. So uh, just some simple things you can do, just little rolls. And then we want to start thinking about our breath because a great way to release tension is to use the exhale huh, of our breath. So every time I release my shoulders, I exhale. And so that exhale just allows them to drop a little more and rolls out a little more tension out of that shoulder and throat. You know, so if I've got a, if, if I have a two hour lecture coming up to 80 people, five minutes in my office before, I'm just kind of doing a few of these to make sure that that hour of email work hasn't gotten into my shoulders and then into my voice. So just a few. As soon as you release that, the tension is like, where do I go? Where am I going to go? We hope that it goes up and out, but oftentimes it'll find the next spot. So we start with the shoulders and then we want to just get into the neck and release to make sure we haven't added any tension. And again, um, simple things about the neck. Yeah, we can go to the side, just ear over shoulder. And you want to go nice and soft, kind of like think about warming up the sternocleidomastoid muscle. I want to like stretch it too hard, just warming it. And then we can slowly bring chin to chest and straight down and kind of warm that back around the cervical vertebrae there. And then bring the other ear just over the shoulder. And again, not a major stretch, just kind of warming it. And once it's warmed a little bit, then we can come back down to center and now bring the shoulder further over the ear. We never go back here, though. It's really important. And another thing you can do is think about sending energy down this arm, like reaching down with your hand. That really increases that stretch a little bit. And then you can go center and go to the other. Do, 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 do. And same thing, send energy down the opposite arm. And if ever you yawn, yawn. <laughs> Forget the culture that says it's impolite to yawn. Yawning is one of the best things you can do for your voice. So natural tension release. Good, and then chin back to chest, and then you can just roll it up. And then again, to make sure we don't have any extra tension in our throat, we can take our head straight back. But the one thing that we can't do is go back and then roll. The cervical vertebrae just aren't designed that way. You'll pinch the discs in your back. So you never go back and roll your head all the way around. You just come straight back. And then all these little muscles under here that add that extra tension in the throat to really get them, and this will feel really nice when the voice is tired. Take your hand here and kind of hold your chest and now go further back. And then think about reaching your chin up like a camel. Mm. So we want to make sure our shoulders aren't adding tension to our throat. We want to release that. And then the other two major places where we cut off those vibrations that are coming up uh, is through a locked or a stiff jaw. So the next thing we want to do, if you'll put your fingers right below your earlobes and kind of move around there, you'll feel the jaw hinge right there. Ka, 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 ka. And then to release that jaw, so we're like opening our mouth so the sound can come out. Uh, if you just hang on to your jaw here and just l encourage it, Oh, to drop down more and more. Again, you can release it and do it again. And release it and do it again. So, um, you know, the jaw is kind of our last line of defense to protect our voice from saying stupid things in the world. So that's why we have a lot of extra jaw tension sometimes. And then, you know, to take that to the extreme, then you start speaking like this because that fear of like saying stupid things or offending people or whatever, and suddenly we're all just talking like this. And of course, no one can understand me, let alone hear me. So all that tension that kind of locks that up, we want to release. So we can really use our mouth and articulate our words, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can do other things, of course. The tongue and the lips are included in articulation of words. So sometimes people can't understand you. Not that you're not supporting your voice or sending, projecting out, but you're simply not articulating. So you also want to make sure that your tongue is released. Uh, and you can literally just kind of, if these are my teeth, just put the tongue in the front, 
behind the bottom teeth and push the middle of your tongue out is a great way to release like tension in your tongue. Yeah, it always looks like this. <laughs> or you can pretend you're a cat like lapping up milk. And then your lips, you can just blow out like a rubber. Remember as kids, we were like, <laughs> just do that. And then you can just kind of like get your whole face and make sure it's loose and there you go. Oh, good. Good, so we should be kind of like loosened up just in terms of the body. Um, but then a couple of more important things uh, is to make sure that to have proper vocal support, you know, if we're, if we're talking on locked knees, then automatically the voice kind of comes up here. So to get your whole vocal mechanism alive, you just kind of want to make sure your, your knees are always slightly bent. So as you're lecturing, as you're walking around, you know, and plus it just increases your presence. And then, you know, the lungs here, um, we don't have to worry about a lot of, of vocal power uh, just to lecture. But certainly, uh, if there's a lot of like rib um, musculature here that's not stretched, that can also limit the amount of breath you have. So you can also just stretch your ribs a little bit here. And or a very simple one is just called the puppet where you just unstack the spine and drop down. <sighs> So we want to make sure that our body is free of tension and then we want to have proper breath support. So that's the next step.